Hello, you lovely lot. Welcome back to your latest installment of Top Dog Tober. We are here every single day with a brand new video. This is day 11 and it's a bumper maths lesson. Now, as always, I need to remind you guys, we have a current competition going on between me and Hayden and I don't want to lose. So how can you help me out? Well, if you enjoy these videos, if you like the way Hayden and I teach you everything to do with the 11 plus, then you need to get yourself along to our website because we release four videos every single week, full lessons for verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, maths and English, all of them come with homework and every single week there's a new set of lessons and homework to have a look at. So this is what you need to do. Go to our website. You can see some example resources on there for free. Looks just like this. You get a lesson, you get homework tasks down the bottom that you can download, including answers, by the way, where you can have a go at what we've just been practicing. And then once you've done that, you can actually see what the answers are with explanations as well. So you always know where you're up to. What you need to do is add it to your cart, put in vote Dylan, you get 15% off the 12 months access. There's nothing else to do really guys, just get yourselves on there. It is amazing value for money. You get to practice loads and loads and you get to see us every single week. But anyway, you're here for today's video, which of course is part of Top Dogtober and I can't wait to do it. But as always, yesterday in the comments, you left an answer to what Hayden was taking a look at here with jigsaw pieces. And I'm about to show you now that you were correct. If you put A, we can see there, we can build the original shape by putting A outside. We can see there with the green shading. Love that visual there, guys. Well done if you put A. But we do really have a bumper lesson today for maths. It's all about doubling and halving. Now, this is a fundamental skill. Very unlikely in 11 plus paper that you'll get a question which says, can you double 16? No. But what we're doing here is we're practicing the skill because if we know these skills and how to do it, it's going to help us unlock questions and work through them more quickly. So first things first, doubling, you're going to pause the video and fill in the gaps. Double those numbers for me. Now, like it says, doubling really is just the same as multiplying by two. And we need to know these doubles. Zero doubled is still zero, two, four, six, eight. You notice every single answer, it's going to get us to an even number. And we are essentially just counting up in twos, guys. You need to know these. I promise you it's really, really, really useful. Why? Well, there's a lot of number of reasons. One of the main ones as well is, if you know double six, when it comes to a question like six plus seven, you can double six to do six plus six and then add one on. Just helps your mental arithmetic, guys. It is vital that you practice this. But if you know those original numbers doubled, you automatically know these ones. So pause the video and see if you can do these just as quick. I'm gonna show you very quickly the previous slide. Easy. So use those facts to now work out this one. Have a go, see if you can do it. So all we're doing really here is doubling zero is still always going to be zero. No matter what we do to zero, it's going to end up with zero. Uh, doubling 10, well, double one was two, so double 10 is uh, 20. Double two was four, so double two tens is four tens, which is 40. And it just goes up like this. This will be 60, this will be 80. We can keep going now. 50 doubled, well, five doubled is 10, but it's 10 times bigger, so it's 100, 120, 140. You get the gist by now. We are simply doubling each time, and it's 10 times bigger than if it was just nine or just eight or just seven. Simple. So we can double those numbers, okay? So if we can double the ones, we can double the tens. Now, why is that important? Well we can combine them. So there's all the answers there. This is how we double numbers now. So if we know how to double ones and tens, and also by definition hundreds and thousands, we can just apply that same logic. How do we double these numbers here? So double 63, you should be thinking of partitioning them. So let's put 63 into our part whole model. We're going to partition the six out. It's not just six and three. We know that it's six tens. So this is actually 60. Now we just have to use our facts from earlier. Double three is six. Double 60, well I know double six is 12, so double 60 is 120. Add them up and we get 126. This is what you should be doing in your head eventually. So right now you could write it down on paper if you're less confident. When you become more confident in your head, for example 37, double seven, double 30, add it up. 285, double five, double 80, double 200, add it all up. I want you to have a go at those two for me and see what you can get. Okay, so again here, 37 goes in, we have 30, we have seven, 
we should know these facts. That's what we need to learn. If we learn these facts, this becomes really simple. 60 plus 14, that's gonna be 74. And this is what adults do when they can double in their head, I promise you. We're just breaking up the number and doubling it. So here I'm gonna go straight into partitioning. We have five and 80 and 200. If we double each part, we end up with 400. We end up with 160. We end up with 10. And if we add all of those together, we get 570. It's as simple as that. If you learn your doubling facts, you can double any number using this method. Simple. This is slightly trickier. It's the same method, so I want you to partition it still. It's just this time we go into decimal places. I want you to have a go yourself first, see if you can do it. Partition it, double each part, and then put them back together at the end. So it's the same logic, 1.7 goes to one and 0 0.7, it's just about practicing that partitioning. We know double one is two. Double 0 0.7, you're still gonna use double seven to help you. Double seven's 14, so double 0 0.7 is 10 times smaller, is going to be 1.4. Two plus 1.4, two plus one is three, and then the 0.4 is left over. The answer there is 3.4. Here, we split it up into three parts, but we don't need the middle one because there are no ones. So we can take the 10 here, we can take the 0 0.5 there, double them both, we get 20 and we get one. Add them up, we get 21. And at the end, we have 0 0.2, we have six and we have 40. Again, double each part, guys, using the same logic, 80 plus 12, using the fact we know double two, therefore double 0 0.2 is just 0 0.4. 80 plus 12 plus four, or 0 0.4 rather, that's going to give us 92.4 as the answer. This is how we double, okay? So partition, double, and then combine and put them back together. Halving, it's a little bit trickier. So let's think about halving. Halving is the opposite, the inverse of doubling. So if I take 10, half of that is five. And if I go back that way, it's the same as doubling. So double five is 10, so half of 10, which is the same as dividing by two, is five. Now we know half of 10 is five, half of eight is four, half of six is three, half of four is two, half of two is one. What about those numbers in the middle? Pause it and have a go and see if you can fill in those blanks. Now, this is simple, really. We're going to be saying what's halfway between two and four. So halfway is between two and four is three. So half of three is 1.5. That special five number for halfway always seems to come up that digit. What's half of one? That's going to be 0 0.5. And we see a pattern emerging now. It's 2.5 between two and three. 3.5 between three and four, and 4.5 between four and five. Simple. If you don't know how to do that, well, you can spend some time practicing and also learning these facts. They're super important. And now we're going to make the same link. So going back to the previous one, half of 10 is five, so half of 100 is 50. Half of 80 is four, uh, half of eight is four, so half of 80 is 40. Now I reckon much easier, you can fill in these gaps, have a go. So whereas before this was 1.5, now it's 10 times bigger, it's just going to be 15. This will be five, these are all whole numbers now. And this is something that we see a lot of children get stuck with, is halving numbers where the tens digit is odd. Because we think, oh, can we half five? That's gonna be, that's gonna be a decimal number, right? No, because it's five tens. Something people do a lot of is they take 50 and they split it into 40 and 10. Half of 40 is easy, it's just 20. Half of 10 is five, that's much simpler. 20 and five gets you 25. So that's a nice little hint there. So let's take a look here. Divide it up however you like. So 80 and four, we're going to divide that obviously into 80 and four. Halve each of them and then see what the answer will be by still combining them at the end. Try the other ones, test some techniques out. You don't always have to partition exactly with place value. I'll show you what I mean after, but you have a go first. So with 84, half of 80, half of eight is four, so half of 80 is 40. Half of four is two, so we get 42 is the answer. Nice and simple. Guys, it's really, really key you learn these facts. This page and this page, it will help you do this much more quickly. 50 and six, now we could do 50 and six. If we know those facts, we know this is 25 and we know this is three, we add them up and we get 28. Now, this still would have been correct if you split it into 40 and 16. That still makes 56 and you could have got 20 and eight. Look, 
it's still 28. So it doesn't matter how you break up the number, you choose based on your confidence. 712, again, uh, you could break it up however you like. You could do two, 10, and 700, if that's what you're confident with. Or you could even break it up into 600, 100, and 12, if you know those halves better. It's up to you. Half of two is one, half of 10 is five, half of 700, well, half of seven is 3.5, half of 70 is 35, half of 700 is gonna be 350. The answer, therefore, is 356. You could have got that from here, 300, 50, and six. It doesn't matter, guys. It's what's best for you as long as you've learned your halving facts. So try these ones now. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you the trick. I want you to have a go yourself, but there is obviously something tricky about these ones. So straight away, you can tell these are odd numbers, so they're not going to halve and give us a whole number. So 15, let's break it up into 10 and five. Half of 10 was five, half is five. Well, we know half of four is two, so half of five is 2.5. Again, you could split five into four and one, if that helps you halve it. Half of four is two, half of one is 0 0.5. You do it however you like. 47, half of 40 and half of seven. If you've learned these facts, you know this is 3.5 straight away. Good to learn these facts. You know this is 20. You combine them and you get 23.5. And then finally over here, we've got 100, we've got 30, and we've got three. Half of 100 is 50, half of 30 is 15, half of three, therefore, is 1.5. And when you add all of these up, line them up nicely, you're going to get 66.5. That's your answer, guys. It's as simple as that. If you learn your facts, these are really easy. If you don't, you can always change how you move around your number to halve them. Break up the number into smaller chunks, half everything, and then combine it. It's the same for doubling. The same technique, just in one we double and one we half. So, speed test, go. Can you solve it? How quick? Okay, the answer's here, 146. And over here, the answer halving 58 would be 29. Well done if you got that using our partitioning method. Uh, here you could double seven, 70 and get 140, double three and get six. Over here you can half 50, get 25, half eight and get four. Do it like that, super duper quick. Speed test, go. How quick did you manage it? Double 509, well, that's really simple. Double 500 is 1,000, double nine is 18. You could have done this one without writing anything down. And that is the end goal, doing it mentally in your head. Half of 382, again, halving two is one, halving 80 is four, so that's gonna give me 41. But then I've got to half 300, that's gonna give me 150, and I know now I've just got to add them up. That's going to give me 191 as an answer. Again, you could have halved 38 and got 19, half uh, 19 tens, which is 190, half the two, which give you one, multiple ways to get to the answer. It doesn't matter. As long as you half everything and then put it back together at the end, you're gonna get the right answer. So here is a bit of a kind of word problem for us to have a look at. Darren starts at 1,032 and halves his number three times. Mariam starts at 34 and doubles her number three times. Who will finish with the larger number? There are a lot of steps to do here, guys. Find out what Darren ends on, find out what Mariam ends on, and tell me who ends up with the larger number. Have a go, we'll go through it after. Okay, let's start with Darren, 1032. So we're gonna start with that number. We're gonna half it three times. Here's the first time. Half of 1,000 is 500, half of 32 is 16. 516. You could be drawing this out however you like. I'm at the point now where I can do it mentally. You might be able to do that as well. 516, the second halving. Half of 500 is 250. I'm going to actually jot this down. Half of 16 is 8. So I'm going to combine these and now I get 258. Perfect. I've done two halvings now. So I'm going to move on now to the next one. Halving 258. Half of uh, 250 is 125, half of eight is four. So I can do it that way. You do it however you want. We're gonna end up with 129. So 129, again, however you want to do this, you can do it. You could write it down like this, 258, and you might think half of eight is four, half of 50 is 25, half of 200 is 100. However you want to do this, 
you're going to end up with 129. Now let's see what Mariam ends up on. 34, she's going to double it three times. People tend to find doubling easier. Let's see. Double 34, so double the 30, double the 4, we end up with 68. Let's double the 68. We end up with 120, double 60, and, eight, and uh, 16. So 16 plus 120 gets us to 136. Look at this. We are already on a larger number, so we can stop there. Whatever we double here is going to end up being more than 129. So the answer was Mariam. She ends up on a much bigger number. Now you know what that means. There's only one slide left, and that is your turn. Guys, I want you to use what we've learned today, practice halving and doubling, but apply it to this problem-solving question. Once you've got an answer, what is the best option? I want you to let us know in the comments below and Hayden will tell you tomorrow exactly which one it was. Guys, thanks for coming. If you've watched every video so far, we've still got a whole lot left. We're not even halfway. Catch you next time.